folks, and welcome to the first ever installment of FPS Month. Th though, to be honest, we're probably going to have to change that title to FPS Time. You see, I kind of forgot that February is a short month, and getting footage for certain games can take longer than others, and I, at the very least, like to upload two reviews a month, so... I guess you could say, I didn't really think ahead. I know you would have, Shasta. And the next time I plan something like this, I'll have make sure to have you help me. Yes, FPS time will take place from February to March now, that way you and I can cover more games. I thought you'd never ask, pup. We're going to be taking a gander at the one game that shot the FPS genre into the mainstream. The one that started a legacy. We're looking at Wolfenstein 3D. Before we get to the review, we need to take a look at a little bit of history behind the game as well as the FPS genre as a whole. Before Wolfenstein 3D hit the shelves, the FPS genre hadn't really taken off yet. Most FPS games were either tank or flight simulators like Academy or Xenocide. Also, many FPS games were just straight up maze games and they had little to no shooting in them. Eventually in April 1991, a little company from Texas called id Software released an FPS game called Hover Tank 3D. It was a fun little game, but nothing to really write home about. Seven months up the road, id released another FPS game called Catacomb 3D. Now this game was really fun, and it took cues from 80s dungeon crawler games like Ultima. Both Hover Tank and Catacomb used a prototype version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine, and they were both the brainchild of these two men pictured here, John Romero and John Carmack. Now, if you're a regular player of PC games, then you probably have heard of these guys at least once. Both of them are legendary devs, but their story is for another time. Finally, in May of 1992, it released Wolfenstein 3D. At first, it was released as a shareware product. Now, for those of y'all who don't know what that is, shareware was basically like a demo for PCs, but they were usually distributed informally. If you liked the demo, then you could buy the full game via phone or money order. Eventually, though, the game was sold in its full package in stores, and damn, was it successful. But to be honest, Wolfenstein 3D isn't the first game in the franchise. Originally, these two games pictured here were released before Wolfenstein 3D, but it was Wolfenstein 3D that really got the ball rolling for the franchise, not to mention it was the game that shot the FPS genre into stardom. So that's the tale behind Wolfenstein 3D, everyone. So, let Shasta and I show y'all why this game is so significant to the FPS genre, and also why it's so damn good. When you start the game, you're presented with a little rating thingy that warns you of profound carnage, and also a MIDI rendition of Horst Wessel Lied, Nazi Germany's national anthem. The music, I have to say, has a really fine touch in this game. Here are a few tunes that I found to be really good.
In all, there are 27 songs in the whole game. Now, back in the day, that was quite a bit of music to be putting into one game. And the man that we have to thank for it all is this guy, Bobby Prince. Mr. Prince is awesome, and he's done the music for numerous FPS games. Those included are Doom 1 and 2, Rise of the Triad, Duke Nukem 3D, and most recently, Rack. Wolfenstein 3D's story is told through a series of six episodes. Episodes 1 through 3 being the main episodes, and episodes 4 through 6 being prequel episodes. And before you play any, you have to first choose a difficulty. And <laughs> this is pretty cool to me. The difficulty selection was made in such a way that the devs wanted you to feel guilty for not choosing a higher level. A lot of FPS games followed suit of this trend after Wolfenstein 3D was made. I agree. Okay, so we choose our episode in difficulty, and we begin. The game's story goes like this. It's the final days of World War II. Acquiring the assistance of deranged Nazi scientist Dr. Shabs, Hitler has devised a sinister plan that could turn the tides of war and bring the Allies to their knees. The protagonist of this game is Sergeant William Joseph B.J. Blaskovich, a hard-as-nails American soldier of Polish descent. I want to go on record here and say that I freaking love this character. He's just so cool and so badass and so American. Like, imagine General Patton and Captain America combined into one, and you get BJ Blaskovich. He's among one of the most patriotic of video game characters ever made. He's guts and glory personified, and he's been kicking Nazi ass the American way since 1992. Anyway, BJ is sent behind enemy lines to destroy Shabs and Hitler's secret plans before they can be put to use. Along the way, BJ ends up getting captured by the Nazis and is sent to the infamous castle Wolfenstein to be executed. Fortunately, BJ escapes from his cell, but now he must traverse through the treacherous castle and continue onward with his mission. Most games during the fourth generation, unless they happen to have been an RPG of some sort, didn't have big or elaborate stories, and Wolfenstein 3D is no exception. But for what little story it has, it gives a lot to offer. And mind you, this was an FPS game from the early 90s. Most FPSs didn't even have stories back then. And it's kind of weird that this game would even have a story to begin with, because John Carmack would later go on to say that, quote, Stories in games are like stories in porn movies. They're expected to be there, but they're not that important, unquote. I don't really think Carmack meant what he said, at least not fully. He may have very well have been put on the spot, and he just happened to say what was on his mind that day. Or maybe he does mean what he said. I don't know. That could very well be. Being that Wolfenstein 3D is an FPS, your main source of offense will of course be guns. The guns are all hit scans, so you won't see the bullets. They deal damage as soon as they're fired. There are a few projectile weapons, but they're only used by one certain enemy and a few bosses. Fortunately for BJ, all the guns use the same ammo, so you needn't worry about finding bullets for a certain gun. Your default weapon is the knife, but the knife is the weakest weapon in the game, and it only seems to succeed in pissing the NPCs off. The first real effective weapon that BJ gets is the pistol. It's kind of weak, but it's enough to take out standard guards and dogs. The next weapon, and the one that BJ will be using throughout most of the game, is the assault rifle. Once BJ picks this baby up, the two will be inseparable. Strong enough to take out enemies fast, yet the firing rate is slow enough to not eat through your ammo in seconds. The final and most powerful weapon that BJ can wield is the chain gun. 
The chain gun can take out a room full of Nazis in moments, and it's pretty effective against the boss characters too. However, the chain gun can go through your ammo in no time. This weapon should only be used against bosses or rooms that are filled to the brim with enemies. And speaking of enemies... Wolfenstein 3D has a very diverse cast of enemies to shoot. You have the German Shepherd dogs, which only bite and are the weakest enemy in the game. I'm sorry that I have to shoot some of your brethren, Shasta. Will do! Wehrmacht troops, which you'll be seeing throughout most of the game, and it doesn't take much gunfire to drop them. Schutzstaffel guards, whom are quite powerful and are capable of taking a good chunk of BJ's health away. Mutants that are silent and deadly. They also have a gun protruding from their chest, which is very powerful and capable of killing you in seconds. Nazi officers, who are quick on the draw and quick on their feet. They also move in a pattern which can make it kind of hard to shoot them. They are just as powerful and capable of killing BJ as fast as the mutants. Finally, you have the Hitler ghosts. These guys shoot an extremely powerful projectile at you, and they take a lot of bullets to kill. However, the projectile that they fire moves pretty slow, and it's easy to strafe around to avoid it. You will only find the Hitler ghosts in boss levels. There are also six bosses, including the Fuhrer himself all of which must be defeated at the end of each episode. I like that it created unique NPCs for you to fight. They could have just made every enemy the same and called it a day, but they didn't. The dogs and Wehrmacht soldiers won't hurt you too much, but the Schustaufel, the mutants, and the officers can kill you if you're not careful, so the devs gave you a challenge concerning the higher level enemies meaning that you have to be a bit tactical when you're in a higher level, and the enemies are more numerous as well as dangerous. Right. As I mentioned before, the game's story is told through a series of six episodes. Each episode has nine floors and one secret floor to fight through, bringing us to a total of 60 levels in all. The levels all have secret doors and movable walls hidden throughout the game. Some of them are obvious, while others are more well hidden. It's not wise to dismiss these hidden doors and movable walls, because many of them lead to secret catches of ammo, health, extra lives, and treasure. In short, this game is long. Many of the floors end up becoming very maze-like, and if you want the full experience, it shouldn't be played in one sitting. Since this was a game that came out in the early 90s, it of course had to have a point counter in it. The points are counted by what kind of enemies you kill and the type of treasure you pick up. It isn't really necessary to collect the Nazi gold placed throughout the levels, but if you want to show off to your friends, post your high score on the web, or just completely master the game, then it's worth looking for anything to plunder. There are four types of treasure that BJ will stumble across. A golden crucifix encrusted with four sapphires and one ruby that's worth 100 points, a ruby encrusted golden chalice that's worth 500 points, a red velvet and gold jewelry box full of gems that's worth 1,000 points, and finally, a sapphire encrusted red velvet crown that's worth a whopping 5,000 points. If you rack up enough points, or completely ace a level, you'll get an extra life. Personally, I think collecting the treasure is fun, but then again, I like collectathons. Since this is a pretty challenging game, one of the things that you're going to have to look after is your health. BJ only has and can only have 100 points of health. And let's face it, unless you're a gaming god and you have divine skills bestowed upon you by Jesus himself, then you're going to take a few hits. I've been playing Wolfenstein 3D since I was six, and I still managed to die a few times. And mind you, 
This is no Call of Duty title. There isn't any regenerating health in this game. Once you get shot, that damage is there until you heal yourself. Fortunately for you, there are some pickups that can give you back some health. You have blood puddles, which restore one point of health, but they only work if you're under 11 points of health. In other words, they can only be used when you're inches away from death. Dog food, which restores four points of health and can only be found where dogs are present. Plates of food, which restore 10 points of health and are pretty common. And finally, you have med kits, which restores 25 points of health. The med kits are kind of hard to come by, and most of the time they're hidden. But if you're playing on a higher difficulty like I am, then it is imperative that you look high and low for the med kits. Another appealing thing about the game is its visuals. Today, Wolfenstein 3D looks pretty ancient, but back in 1992, these graphics were state-of-the-art. Though, it should be known that the only thing in this game that's 3D are the environments. The enemies, the pickups, and everything else is 2D. In other words, two-dimensional sprites on a three-dimensional plane. But you gotta put it into perspective. This was 1992, and 3D was more or less in its developmental stage. The enemies have quite a few sheets of animation. When they die, it looks very convincing, especially when you kill the bosses. Most of the time, they disintegrate into a pile of gibbs. Nothing looks abnormal either. Furniture looks like furniture, plants look like plants, and skeletons look like skeletons. The walls are very detailed. Most of the time, you'll be seeing stone walls in shades of gray, blue, and brown, but there are some walls that are made of wood or brick. There are also some purple walls, too. And there are some walls made of metal. It's a good thing that id put different types of walls throughout Wolfenstein 3D. Too many walls that look the same would have made the game look drab. Also, it would have made the devs look lazy, something that they were not. Well, folks, it's almost time to give this game its final grade, but before I do, let me give you all my final thoughts. Despite all the love and respect that I have for this game, it isn't perfect. There are a few negative issues that this game has. One of them is that when you die in a level, you start from where the level begins and all of your guns and most of your ammo has been taken away. Fortunately, you could save anywhere and anytime you want, so this should not be too much of an issue. Though it does beg the question that if you can save anywhere and anytime you like, then why do you have extra lives? And one other nagging issue is that if you're in a place where there are a lot of enemies, an NPC can actually shoot through other NPCs and hit you. I've been killed many times this way, and it just feels like a cheap way to die. But Wolfenstein 3D is a game where trial and error will make you a better player. It is also very easy to get lost in the later levels because they end up becoming like mazes. But since there are maps on websites like GameFAQs and other parts of the internet, it shouldn't be too hard to find your way around. There are also quite a few ports created, but it's the original DOS version that still stands the test of time. So in conclusion, had it not have been for Wolfenstein 3D, then we probably wouldn't be playing great FPS games like GoldenEye, Bioshock, or Firecry. Truth be told, the FPS genre as a whole owes its relevance of today to Wolfenstein 3D. If you call yourself an FPS fan, then this is a must-have game. So I'm going to give Wolfenstein 3D an A for awesome. It's definitely earned it. But I needed a second opinion. I love this game to pieces, but others may not be so hot to trot with it. So we have my main guy D-Labs here to give his views. Dylan, take it away. Hello everybody, it's D-Labs and I'm here to review Wolfenstein. Now, I don't know if it's exactly the oldest Wolfenstein or the new Wolfenstein 3D, but it's basically the same game. Now, I'm going to be straight here. I only played like three levels. I'm not really big on playing a lot of old stuff like this, especially with graphics like this. Yeah, and in the some of the ports you see, they look okay, but in the Super NES version I was playing, man, it looked like fucking rabbit dog shit. It was really bad. And because I was playing an emulated version of the game, 
controlling the character was extremely difficult. I honestly, like, I would move left too much or right too much, it would be too fast, and I wouldn't hit the characters, and I would die a lot. I didn't find this too much fun. I think with a controller, it definitely would be you know, easier. One thing about this game that is interesting is the weapons you find. Switching out the weapons was actually fun because it's like the only fucking thing that it gives you to really change anything. So, yeah, that's something that was fun. The weapons were cool. Finding those secrets, you know, I'll be honest, I found one. You know, every time I passed a level, there were more secrets, but I didn't go back. I didn't care. And I found one secret and all it is is fucking weapons and health. The shit that's already scattered throughout the world, but you move some door or something to get it out of the way. It's a secret. That's stupid. That, that's hardly a secret. It's more like a fucking doorway. You know, it's a door you open. That, you know, by going to my closet, is that a secret? When it comes to the sound of the characters, all I really heard was, Arrgh! and a door open. And then the music plays over it, and the music is good, but it feels like Super Nintendo, man. It's like the best it could do. And then when you look at the other versions of the game, only Game Boy Advance seems to be a tad crappier, but the rest of them are better. They look better, they sound better, they seem to perform better. So I played an inferior version, and that's fine. Because honestly, I don't think whatever version I played this on, it would have changed too much. It's still a very small game, and I'm used to the new games, right? Like, this has, the story at the beginning is cool little picture and the president yada yada, but that's not enough for me. I need more narrative to carry me through the game. And this is an awesome, like, for level design, this is awesome. This is a great 20 minute game. If you're on the bus or something, this is what you're going to play. But honestly, I don't, who, why would you play this at home when you have so many other good games to play that have narrative that people, you know, the, compared to the time length of three years for a new game and seven months to make this, why would you play this other than on your phone or as like, hey, buddy, remember this? And you play for 20 minutes. You know, all in all, the game isn't very hard. You know, it has a difficulty setting you can put and... You know, I got through each level within like five minutes and yada yada, but... And don't think that I'm just hating on this game, because I'm not. I played the new Wolfenstein, the new Order. I played it. I enjoyed it. Well, I gave it a 6 out of 10. But still, I played it, and it was fun. It was a fun game. So you're probably like, oh, if you gave the new Wolfenstein a 6, you must think this is a 1. No, I'm going to give this a 6 too. I appreciate what this game done for the industry. It made first-person shooters possible. And I really appreciate that. And if you're wondering why I'm giving both of them the exact same rating, a 6, is because over the 30-year evolution of Wolfenstein, they still kept the formula correct. Basically, they give you very few mechanics to go through the game, and you get bored of very fast. And that's what this game is about, giving you very little, and then you finish the game, and you're like, hey, should I do it again with the other weapon? Because that's the only option it gives you. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, Wolfenstein is reviewed and done. Psh, fucking over with. So that's what I think, everybody. Thank you very much, Redneck, for letting me be on your channel. That's awesome. I, I love being here. Uh, if everybody, you know, I'm Dylan Tamazzi. Thank you for listening. And, uh, you know, if I sound a little weird in this review, is because I'm not feeling the best. I've had problems with my foot. But I'm feeling a lot better, you know, pretty soon here. So thank you, everybody, for, you know, yaddy yaddy. I'm doing the yaddy yaddy today. Eh? Thank you again, Dylan, for your insight. And you folks remember to go to his channel and take a gander at some of his vids. He's a great reviewer. All right, so what about you, Shasta? You got any final thoughts on Wolfenstein 3D? Well, that's good, and thank you for your opinions, too. Well, folks, we still got a couple FPS games to play, so I'll see y'all in the next review.